Únete a la comunidad de noticias republicanas sin censura y mantente informado con la verdad detrás de las noticias en Estados Unidos. Te esperamos. GOP presidential candidate, Senator from South Carolina, Tim Scott. Senator, great to see you. Congratulations on getting in the race. Good morning, Brian. And uh, long anticipated, uh, a lot of people pushing you forward, they should. First off, your reaction to the House vote yesterday, 70 Republicans said no. Yeah, no doubt. This was a deal that Kevin McCarthy had an incredible task ahead of him. He had to negotiate with someone who said they did not want to negotiate. So when you look at the results of the negotiation, A, you got to be thankful that there was one, but B, now let's look at the details. The biggest detail for me is the fact that Joe Biden, who we cannot trust on spending, has an unlimited credit card until the end of his term. Until January 2025, there is no limit. There is no way for us to understand what he's going to spend, except for looking back. 1.2 trillion more last time, 2 trillion this fiscal year. I can only imagine that next fiscal year will be more. The American people cannot afford Joe Biden with an unlimited credit card and no one holding him accountable until after we defeat him in November of 2024. What about the pay-go provision? What about the 1% uh, capping at 1%? Does that uh, do anything for you? Well, that does something, but the truth is that the pay-go was, uh, was a substitution for the RAINS Act, which actually would reduce spending because it would require every time you have a you know, regulation that goes up by $100 million, others have to come down. Pay-go is trying to get there. It just doesn't go far enough. All right, so the field got bigger. Uh, the, big, the big news was for you yes. and then DeSantis, and now it's going to be Vice President Mike Pence and Chris Christie. Are you getting concerned the field is getting too big to have your voice heard? I am not, actually. The good news is as I travel around, the one thing's happening in Iowa and New Hampshire and South Carolina, the crowds are getting bigger and the enthusiasm's getting higher. What I'm learning is that people are starving for an optimistic, positive message as long as you have a backbone and you're talking about conservative principles. People love our message. The more we get out, the better off we are. And right. the good news is you can help by going to potemscott.com. We need all the help we can get. And you're getting a lot of help and a lot of financial support. People really pushing you to run ever since you gave the rebuttal speech the, after the president spoke on his uh, first speech after becoming president of the United States. You have an op-ed that everyone's reading on foxnews.com right now talking about your personal story. Yes. That you still believe this is the land of opportunity, even though patriotism is down and people get a concern fresh off Memorial Day. Even though your grandfather grew up in the Jim Crow South, you see nothing but possibility in America. Absolutely, Brian. The one thing we all should realize and take a step back from the pundits who tell us that the progressive story of America is one that is filled with racism. It is alive within the pit of hell. What we can believe is a story of evolution. America is the one country on earth that fought the big fight so that we could all live together. I'm not talking about the Civil War. I'm talking about the fight that happens every single day where everyday Americans show up for each other. That's why my faith in America tour reinforced my confidence that believing in each other is our best path forward. Here's what we know about the Biden administration. They weaponize race to hide their failures, to hide their insufficiencies. If you do that, you cheapen the journey of my grandfather. You cheapen the story of evolution, and you make young kids today believe that the only way forward is to be an exception. But today's rule was yesterday's exception. So all things are possible in America, and the best news is the future of this country is not defined by the color of your skin, it is the quality of your education. We must continue to push quality education in every zip code in this great nation. So I'm walking down uh, South Carolina, uh, Main Street with you, uh, as you know, in Charleston, and yes. I asked you, did you come here as a kid? And you go, no, this two white people came here, black people were there. As I'm walking with you, people are screaming out to you like you're a rock star. And I thought to yourself, well, wow, have things changed? But there's no bitterness in Tim Scott for the way they were, just optimism, but because of the way they are. 
But, but we, I, my, Brian, my grandfather taught me that you can spend more time in the windshield or you can wreck your car by spending too much time in the rear view mirror. The one thing I love about where I live, the birthplace of the Civil War, Charleston, South Carolina, when I ran for Congress against Strom Thurmond's son, Paul, a good guy, People in Charleston, South Carolina said, we're going to judge you on the content of your yeah. character, not the color of your skin. And I won that race because America and the evolution of the Southern heart is palpable. Our transformation is the greatest untold story in the world today. And it's time for us to be proud to be Americans. It's time for us to be excited about our future. And let's have that conversation from C. The shining sea. More on that story and uh, Senator Tim Scott's message as he runs for President of the United States on FoxNews.com. Senator, always great to see you. Thanks so much. Se parte del cambio inscribiéndote a nuestro Telegram arroba news de hoy. Te esperamos.